Greetings, Saints man. This is lesson 6.2 uh, regarding bisectors of triangles. First thing we're going to discuss is the notion of concurrency. Concurrency is when we have three or more lines uh, intersecting at a point. So it looks like this. We've actually dealt with two lines intersecting, and they do so at exactly one point. When we have concurrent lines, and for our uh, just for our purposes, it's only going to actually be three that we're going to deal with because we're going to do these within triangles. That we'll have a third line that's going to um, effectively intercept that intersection. So we're going to have three lines going to go through um, that one single point. That point actually has a name, which is called the point of concurrency. <clears throat> and um, we're going to discuss points of concurrency in four different ways. Considering the following, let's take this. This is a, obviously a triangle. And the question that we, we have is really, where is the middle of this triangle? How would we construct that? Um, I think we can come up with some idea that there is some sort of middle. Uh, but that's, and it's going to come, you know, obviously and, and, and kind of point you in the right direction. It's going to come through concurrency. But that middle isn't going to be here, for example, right? It's going to be somewhere inside of the triangle probably somewhere around here, but how are we gonna actually come up with that? What's the difference between having it here or having it here, right? Um, it, well, the way we're gonna actually go through this right now is we're gonna um, create what's gonna be called the circumcenter. The circumcenter is gonna be the point of concurrency that's created through perpendicular bisectors. So if we're going to take a midpoint, if you did the midpoint construction for all three of these sides, right? And remember, the midpoint construction simultaneously is also the perpendicular bisector, right? It's the one where we have the arc and then the arc, right? Um, this guy is going to look like this, right? And I promise you, we can do a proof. It's going to take a little while. So just in the interest of time, um, you know, if any of you really want to see the proof, you can come see me during my office hours. Um, and we will wind up with that point of concurrency, which is the uh, circumcenter. So we have a perpendicular bisector, perpendicular bisector. Right, mine isn't perfect, which is why I did, you know, I had a hard time lining up. But that right there is your circumcenter. Okay. Here is the challenge. We are going to find that circumcenter. Now, what's um, interesting about the circumcenter is that it winds up being equidistant to every single one of these vertices of the triangle. Circumcenter, the word sounds like circumference, right? Uh, the circumference is in regard to a circle, right? Circles are going to have a point that's going to be equidistant to all the points on the circle, which is the center. Now, watch this. If I were to kind of just sketch, this is actually called circumscribing, right? And we have roughly all of our vertices on the center, right? Uh, so, excuse me, all the vertices on the circle, look where the center is. It's that circumcenter, right? So we could construct, if you're ever con uh, curious about where to find a point equidistant to um, all of the, um, try to find a point that's going to be equidistant to, um, you know, three different points, right? Like take three cities, San Diego, Phoenix, and Las Vegas. You could actually find, right, create a triangle and create um, the coordinates, a circumcenter for those. Um, that circumcenter is obviously going to be somewhere strange, like in the middle of the desert, but, um, you know, it might be uh, of interest to find something like that. Um, you'll, you can find your own application for it. Um, we're going to take triangle DEF. Um, make sure we call it triangle DEF. D, e, With D having the coordinate of 6, 4, uh, E having the, the uh, coordinate of negative 2, 4, and F having the coordinate of negative 2, negative 2, okay? So, <clears throat> our way of doing this. Let's actually take two of these uh, sides. Now, thank you, thanks to deductive reasoning, uh, we actually don't need to find three different uh, perpendicular bisectors. We actually only have to do two. The reason why is if you, uh, if, if we do two, that third perpendicular bisector is going to intersect anyway. So we need to find the intersection of two lines, right? Lines, as we know in a coordinate plane, um, have an equation, right? It's going to be uh, a linear equation, and it, um, we can 
uh, we can engineer it through the, the point slope uh, form and then actually put it into slope intercept. Um, we're going to do as follows. If we're going to do the perpendicular bisector, first we need to bisect two sides. So I'm going to take two sides, DE and DF. Okay, those are the two sides I'm going to work with. I could two, pick any two, right? Any two of the three. I could do EF if I'd like. The midpoint, I just try, happen to choose these guys. The midpoint here is going to be, right, I'm going to combine 6 minus 2 over 2 and uh, 4 plus 4 over 2, which is going to give me 6 minus 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then 4 plus 4 is 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4. Then I have the midpoint of DF, which is going to be 6 minus 2 over 2 again, comma uh, 4 minus 2, right? This is, remember, just the, the midpoint formula. And of course, so we have our midpoint over here. 6 minus 2 is going to be 4 minus two, divided by 2 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I have my two midpoints. Now I need to find what my slope is for each of these. So the slope, or M, of DE. Okay, which is going to be 4 minus 4 over 6 minus minus 2. In other words, that's a slope of 0. We're going to come back to this guy. Then we have the slope of df, right? m is slope. Slope of df is going to be 4 minus minus 2 over 6 minus minus 2, which is going to be 6 over 8, which is going to be 3 over 4. Now, those aren't really the slopes I'm after. Remember, I'm looking for the perpendicular bisector. I have the bisector, right, the midpoint. Now I need perpendicular to this slope, right, perpendicular to that side DE, which is going to be, in this case, that perpendicular slope. Oops, let's go ahead and make that blue still. Perpendicular slope. We're thinking about the slope of zero, right, zero slope. If you go back to the four types of slope, perpendicular to that is a vertical line, which is going to be an undefined slope, okay? The other one. That guy is going to be the negative reciprocal of 3 fourths, which is negative 4 over 3. Okay? And then from there, point slope. Now this one is going to be very straightforward. Undefined, all we're going to do is just take this guy. We need the x-coordinate, okay? If you remember, a vertical line goes through x. So this one is easier done than said. Um, we wind up just with the equation being x is equal to 2. The next one is going to be a little bit more challenging. We're going to use slope. Uh, point, point slope, right? y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. Okay? When we do that, we're going to have y minus 1, right? We're using this guy right here, that midpoint. y minus 1, m is negative 4 over 3 times the quantity x minus 2. And then I'm going to solve, right? I'm going to have y minus 1, I'm going to distribute. It's equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 8 thirds. Add ones of both sides, so y is equal to negative four thirds x, and then eight thirds plus one. One is three thirds. That's going to be eleven thirds. Okay, and I have my other equation. So I need to find my circumcenter. What am I going to do? Well, I already have an x. I'm just going to plug it into this guy right here. So when I evaluate, I'm going to have y is equal to negative four thirds times um, instead of x, I have two, and that's plus eleven thirds. Okay. And this is very, very straightforward. It's negative 8 thirds, right? When we multiply negative 4 thirds times 2, negative 8 thirds plus 11 thirds is going to be 3 thirds, or in other words, y is 1. So, gentlemen, we have our circumcenter right here. We have a coordinate. We have the x value, which we already know is 2. And then we just found that y value when we plugged it back in. That's 1. So that's the intersection of those two lines. Last but not least, we're going to um, say we're going to deal with the angle bisector which we can do through a triangle, it's going to have a point of concurrency that's going to be called the in-center, okay? Which is going to create an equidistant relationship where the circumcenter did it to each of the angles. This guy's going to do it to each side, okay? And it looks like this. I'm not going to really dwell too much on this guy. Um, angle bisector, right? So we're going to bisect these guys. So here, this is going to be congruent. Here, this guy's going to be congruent. And then here. This right here is your in-center. And what it does, it's going to create these 
if you remember the, the distance we measure is going to be perpendicular to the side, so it's this. Right? All those black dashed lines are going to be congruent. Okay? And that's all I've got for you for today. So go ahead and uh, and, and just real quick, if this guy right here is is equal to three, it means that this one has to be equal to three, that uh, line perpendicular. It's very straightforward. Don't overthink those problems. Uh, go ahead and get us started on your assignment on Canvas. Good luck.